Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to another lesson with me, Anna English, here on English Like a Native. It's Monday and that means we are jumping straight back into the complete phrasal verb list. Every week on Monday, usually at four o'clock, we have been learning 10 new phrasal verbs or in some cases, just general phrases. Um, but we're doing the complete list. So if you are really keen to get to grips and to feel like you're really fluent in the English language, then phrasal verbs are what you need to know because we use them all the time. So last week, we covered a number of phrasal verbs, including be up to something, be up for something. I hope you're up for the lesson today. We also did to be taken with something or to be snowed under. Okay, now I do have to make a correction to last week's lesson. Um, there's a common mistake that us natives make, and I made it too. And that is the phrasal verb to be taken back. Now, if you joined me last week, you'll remember this one. If you're taken back by something, you're shocked by it, you're surprised by it. But the correction is that we have to add a letter. It should be taken aback. Taken aback. Now, it's a very, it's a very archaic word. It's a very old-fashioned word to be taken aback. Um, but that is the correct phrasal verb. So I'm just going to show it you now. It should be this: be taken aback. Okay, so I'm going to correct it here as well. I was taken aback when I heard that she was planning to file for divorce. Okay, so that's the correction to that one. So if you were here last week, then now you know the correct version and apologies for getting that wrong. Us natives make mistakes all the time. If you do spot something you're not sure about, then please do let us know because we can't always be 100% correct. We're only human after all. All right, so today we're moving on to number 81. We're going to learn 10 more phrasal verbs and we're going to start with bear on something. To bear on something. Now, to bear on something means that it's connected or related to something or that it will affect something. Let's have a look at it. To bear on something. So, I'm not used to seeing it in this format. I normally hear the phrase bearing on. To have a bearing. Oh, a bearing on something. And it means exactly the same thing. Um, but as a phrasal verb, it looks like this. To bear on something. And you might see it in both ways. But as a native, I'll say that my I most commonly see to have a bearing on something. So for example, I might say that, imagine I have a headache and I'm doing a live lesson, but I've had a headache all day. I might say, I'm a dedicated teacher. So having a headache will have no bearing on my lessons. It will have no effect on my lessons. Or if I tell you I love a man, I'm in love with this man. I'm in love with Mr. Smith. And you tell me something very bad about Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith is um, a criminal. Mr. Smith is rude to his mother. Mr. Smith eats with his mouth wide open. <coughs> Mr. Smith farts and it stinks. Ooh. I will say I love him so much that this information has no bearing on my feelings. It has no effect. It, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me. So that's how I use bearing on, but let's move back to the simple phrasal verb to bear on something. So the example here is, your feelings for the defendant should not bear on the final judgment, should not be related to, should not affect the final judgment. And if you're not sure about this word, a defendant is someone who is being accused of something in a courtroom or in, in law. So say someone accuses you of stealing and you are now in front of a judge and a jury or whoever's judging you and saying, I didn't do it. And you're trying to prove yourself. You are the defending, the defendant. You're defending yourself. So I'm saying in this sentence, your feelings for the defendant should, bear, should not bear on the final judgment. Your feelings for the defendant should not bear on the final judgment. Okay, 
So, ladies and gentlemen, you know how this works. Uh, I'm always going to try and help you and give you the best possible service that I can, um, within my means, of course. So, if you would like to write a sentence using any of these phrasal verbs, I will try my best to correct you during this live session. So, patrons, I have the patron room open. Hello. Um, Alexander, hi. Ella says, hi there, your makeup love's absolutely marvellous today. Oh, well, that's very sweet. I'm going to give you a bit of love for that. Thank you. Um, I did just slap it on quite quickly, but I appreciate that you think it looks good. <laughs> Alexander, the examination results have no bearing on my ability. Very good. Well done. Um, I have no bearing on my ability. Um, I made lovely brownies today. I wish I could give you some. Oh, I wish I could have some lovely brownies as well. I have actually been naughty today and finished off the after eights. These are like special dinner mints. They're chocolates with mint inside. And you have them at dinner when you have guests. But I sit and I've sat and ate them all. <laughs> I didn't eat them all today, but I did finish them off today and I probably shouldn't have done tut tut naughty Anna um oh sorry what was the last message was Alexander time has no bearing on the amount of lessons I have at school time has no bearing on the amount of lessons I have at school hmm nice okay and uh, let me see if there's any in the uh in the YouTube chat room hey Anna my teacher I miss you and I'm happy to learn English with you thank you very much uh, ah, 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 okay, um, do, 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 all right, guys, I'm going to carry on, I can't see any examples, um, to correct in the chat room, so let me carry on, so the next one is to bear out, you bear something out, it means you support it, or you prove a claim or an, an idea, to bear it out, you prove something, or you support something, or you prove that it's correct, basically, um, and the example I've given, because I find these ones quite difficult, actually. Um, I've given two examples of this one. I've given, my recent actions bear out the love I bear you. Now, I, we don't say this often, but I used bear twice, because bear has lots of different meanings. Obviously, we have the phrasal verb, and this means to prove, to support, my recent actions prove or support the love I bear you. The love I bear you means the love I have for you. The love I bear you. Okay? My recent actions bear out the love I bear you. And then I've given another example because I found this to be an, an unusual phrasal verb that I don't come across very often. Um, the example is, this evidence will bear out my innocence. Again, we've gone back to the courtroom. This evidence will prove my innocence is basically what I'm saying. Okay. So, let me have a look at your examples. Alexander, what have we got? Anna, if I tell the judge that I wasn't there, will you bear me out? Hmm. Will you, su will you support my claim? Yes, I'm... I think that's absolutely right. I mean, I'm not that familiar with this phrase of verb myself, but that, that seems right. When you support me is basically what you're saying. Um, hello, Anna. My mother's mood always bears on children. Always bears on children. It feels weird, doesn't it? Always affects the children. Yes, I guess, I guess that has to be right. Um, but like I said, bear on and bear out are not common phrasal verbs. Just be aware of that. They're not common. They confused me a little. I had to do a little reading on them. I wasn't that sure. So they're not very common. I'm going through them because they're on the list of complete phrasal verbs. I have to do all of them, but they're not that common. Okay. So let's move on. Now, this is a phrasal verb that is common that we do use regularly. And it's the phrasal verb to bear up to bear up and it means to resist pressure so basically you would normally hear this as a question people normally say how are you bearing up if they know you're dealing with a lot of trouble or they know that you're having a difficult time they might say how are you bearing up are you bearing up okay 
And we normally use it in that context. And you'll say, yes, I'm, I'm doing all right. Thank you very much. Um, so it's kind of like saying, how are you doing? How are you? But in a circumstance where you know the person you're talking to is dealing with a lot of difficult things, how are you bearing up? Um, and the example sentence I gave here is, I heard that you were coping with a lot of pressure at work. That should probably be dealing with. Let's change this to dealing with. Because coping suggests that they are dealing with it well. You are coping. Um, so I'll change it to dealing with. It makes it clearer. I heard that you were dealing with a lot of pressure at work. How are you bearing up? Okay. So... Um, I'd like to hear your examples then, please. Um, I've got Ella. S Ella says, how are you bearing up with your depressed girlfriend? How are you bearing up with your depressed girlfriend? Yeah, I guess that works. I guess, yeah, no, it does work. It feels unusual in that context, but, um, but yeah, we'll give that a thumbs up. How are you bearing up with your depressed girlfriend? Yes. A friend of mine bore up well under the news of her husband's injury. Good, so you've changed it to past. What I had a, I had a thought while I was writing today's examples. And the thought was that I don't hear phrasal verbs as often in the past tense. I'm sure I don't. They tend to be in in the in the in the present, we tend to use them in present tense um, or in continuous, like how are you bearing up? So yeah, unusual one. English is tricky, isn't it? Um, okay. So Camille, Camille says, I can't bear up with my accounting homework. I can't bear up with my accounting homework. I guess that works because Bearing up means to cope, but more commonly in that respect, you would say, I can't cope. I can't cope with my accounting homework. Like I said, bear up normally appears as a question. How are you bearing up? Okay, all right, let's move on. So the next one um, is similar. We're just adding a word. So you bear up under bear up under and this is to really cope with something difficult or stressful um, and the example sentence I've given here is we are all surprised that he's bearing up under the pressure that you are putting him under we are all surprised that he's bearing up under the pressure that you're putting him under okay so that's very similar to this one you're just adding under okay to bear up under the pressure Okay, let's swiftly move on. Now, this is a very common, very common phrasal verb to bear with. I use this all the time. And in fact, I actually confuse this with the other spelling of bear, with this spelling. So it's something I always have to think about. To bear with should be like the animal bear. Bear with. And it means be patient. Just give me a moment. Be patient with me. And the example sentence I've given is, you have caught me at a very bad time, so just bear with me a moment. Let's put for a moment to make this nice and easy. Just bear with me for a moment while I get myself together. You have caught me at a very bad time, so just bear with me for a moment while I get myself together. Okay. Okay, so one of you is asking for phonetics and I will remind you that I have over 300 video lessons here for you to delve into and enjoy and one of those lessons which was released not that long ago is on the complete phonetic alphabet. So if you're interested in, interested in phonetics then that's a lesson for you, okay? Um, all right, so I want you to give me a sentence using bear with. So normally you might say, I was asked to bear with him for a second, or um, I'd like you to bear with me while I try and sort this out. I usually email students and say, I've received your request, please bear with me. I'll help you out soon enough. Okay, so bear with. Some people just say, bear with, bear with. 
and they just mean be patient. I would normally say, I would suggest that you add bear with me on the end, bear with me, bear with me, but some people do in a slangy type of way say, bear with, bear with, it just means wait. Oh, Ram, bless you. So Ram has just dropped a super chat. Thank you so much, Ram. That's very, very kind of you. You said, hi, Anna. Good evening. Ram from India, smiley face. And it's very nice to see your smiley face here. And thank you very much for your super chat donation. Um, anyone who drops a super chat is entitled to a copy of notes that I've used in the lesson. Um, the phrasal verb notes are not complete yet. Of course, we have a long way to go to get to the end of the list. Um, if you want to be patient and wait until the list is finished, I'll send you the complete list. Um, or you can request any set of notes from any of the previous lessons I've done. So just drop me an email and remind me that you send a super chat and I will get those notes over to you. All right, so um, Dilshad said, I can always bear with you but we just need to make a few corrections to your sentence here. So let me just show everyone. So um, always, as I say each week, capital I, and a, a, every sentence should begin with a capital letter. And let's not be lazy and use um, shortened versions. Let's use the full words. When we're writing, and we're writing formally, you should use you rather than the single letter. I can always bear with you. Okay, very good. Um, then I've got this sentence from Yud Hanganwa. I'm so sorry, I probably mispronounced that. You know I'm not very good with names. You've written this. Sometimes I can't bear with you. So take out the space. This is one word. Sometimes I can't bear with you. Now, be very careful to know exactly what you mean. If you say I can't bear with you, you're saying, I can't wait. I'm sorry, I can't wait. And in that circumstance, you probably wouldn't use bear with you. You'd probably just say, I'm sorry, I've got no time. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm busy. I'm sorry, I have to go. I'm sorry, I can't wait. Um, but you, if, unless you mean I can't bear you, which is another um, a different phrase, if you can't bear somebody, it means that you can't stand them, you don't like them, you hate them. Um, okay, so I can't bear you means I hate you sometimes. Sometimes I hate you and sometimes we do have that feeling about people we care about. You know, I love him, but sometimes I can't bear him. But to bear with is to wait for someone or to be patient with someone. Okay, so you must understand which version you mean to decide whether you need that word or not. Okay, lovely. So we're gonna move down to the next one in a second. Um, my elder brother always amazes me how he can always bear up difficult situations. How he can always bear up. I would say, I would change that to how he can always, and make sure situations are spelt properly, by the way. Um, I would write, my eldest brother always amazes me. Um, uh, I, I would say, actually, my eldest brother always amazes me. I don't know how he, how he always manages to bear up under. Oh under difficult situations, situations, like that. My eldest, my elder brother always amazes me. I don't know how he always manages to bear up under, oh dear, I've done it wrong. <gasps> Goodness me. Under difficult situations. Okay. And then Ella says, bear with her. It will take a moment for her to get back on track. Very good, well done. Um, life is a struggle by itself, bear with it. Yes, that works, you can say bear with it. Um, good, well done, really nice. All right, let's move on. I've got lots of comments coming in in the chat room. Forgive me if I don't have time to read out your comments, but I wanna keep moving forward so that people who don't have much bandwidth don't have to hang on for me chatting too much. So. The next one on the list is 
Where were we? Beat down. Now, beat down has many different meanings. Beat down can be to fall on someone or something. So we normally use this with weather or light. So we'll normally say the sun is beating down or we could say the rain is beating down. You could say the hailstone was beating down. It's if, if weather is coming down harshly, coming down violently, it's beating down. It was beating down on us. You could even say like the rocks were beating down on us if there was a rock slide and, is that a rock slide? A landslide and there's lots of rocks falling down. So the rocks were beating down on us. So if something comes down violently, but we also regularly use it for harsh sunlight, if the sun is really intense. Um, one of my students is in India and was saying this morning that, you know, in India it's getting really, really hot and the sun just beats down on them all day long and it becomes unbearable. So the sun or the rain usually is how we use it. It was beating down on us. I don't like the sun beating down on me all day. It makes me feel unwell. Let's have a look at the example sentence I actually wrote and that was, the sun is really beating down today. Yesterday the rain was beating down. Okay, so I'd like you to give that one, give that one a try. Um, and then the next version of beat down is to break something in or to break through something. Now I normally hear the version I've used in the example, which is to beat down the door, to beat down the door. And imagine I'm behind the door, you won't let me in. And I've shouted, if you don't let me in, I will beat down the, oh, sorry, I will beat the door down. So I've put the object in the middle. If you don't let me in, I will beat the door down. Or you could say it the other way around, I will beat down the door. Okay, have you ever beaten down a door? I'm, ho I'm hoping not. Hopefully you've never had to be that violent. Um, so let's have a look, see if you've given me any ex examples. Um, <laughs> Sheriff says, I like to sing while the rain is beating down. I like to sing while the rain is beating down. There is something quite romantic and quite nice when the rain is coming down really heavy, isn't it? Isn't it? That's a tag question that doesn't belong there. There is something quite nice, isn't there? There is, isn't there? But we'll do tag questions in another lesson. But there is something quite nice about rain beating down, isn't there? Um, you are always beating us down, just like nightmare. <laughs> um, you Because you've used, um, well, nightmare should have an article basically. So just like a nightmare or just like my, in my nightmare, you might say. Um, but that's a different meaning. And the other meanings are, C, beat down could be to exhaust or to discourage someone. So if I, if I'm trying to stop you from doing something, perhaps you have an amazing idea for a new business. And every time I see you, you're like, Anna, I'm going to start this new business. It's amazing. I'm going to have a cake shop. I'm going to open a cake shop. And I know that you're really bad at making cakes. So I'm going to try and discourage you, but perhaps I'm not a good friend and I don't do it gently. And all I keep saying to you is, you're awful at making cakes. You definitely shouldn't do that. I think it's a really bad idea. There's another cake shop down the road, which is delicious. No one's going to buy your cakes when you're so close to that cake shop. And I just keep hitting you with negativity. And eventually I beat you down. I beat you down. And you don't want to open your cake shop anymore because I've discouraged you or I've exhausted you with my negativity. Um, okay. And the final version of the word is to force or to drive down to defeat or subdue. Now, normally we would use this when talking about bargaining. So let's say we're talking about money. Um, well, let's just go back to the last meaning, which is to exhaust or discourage. The example sentence I wrote was, they were enthusiastic at first, but the constant taunts from the other children eventually beat them down. 
and the word taunt taunts are um like when you're making fun of someone and you say horrible things that is taunting like if you run in a race and you lose and you're upset about it and I keep saying ah you're a loser you lost the race ha 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 you're rubbish I am taunting you okay I'm taunting you um and then to beat down meaning to force or drive down the example sentence I've given here is the salesman wanted 100 pounds but I managed to beat him down to 80 pounds so I've managed to force the price down, okay? Um, Miranda has said, don't let people beat your dreams down. That works, don't let people beat your dreams down. Um, and you could also say, um, you, should, you should feel free to dream, don't let people beat you down. You could say that, and that would work as well. Um, I beat the bank door down and looted it, says Daniel. <gasps> I hope not, but a good sentence. Just make sure you spelt beat correctly. You spelt it incorrectly there. Um, when I was playing with my brother, he closed the door and I said to him, I will beat the door down if you don't open it. Very good. And that's um, Garda, Garda Hussein. Well done. That's a good sentence. Just make sure you use a capital letter at the beginning. Um, okay, so let's carry on. Oh, I'll just do, Dr. Samir says, my sister is angry at me because I beat her mobile down today. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. I can't tell you why, but it just doesn't work because, because with a door, when, if you're beating it down, you're physically either going through it or you're knocking it from its standing position. So you beat it down. Um, you could even, I guess you could say, I beat the wall down, although that doesn't work very well either. But to, to beat a phone down doesn't work. You could say, I, I broke her phone or I threw, if you actually physically threw it down onto the floor, you could say, I threw her phone down. Um, or you could say, I smashed her phone up. So that's another phrasal verb, to smash up. Smash up. But beat down with a little object doesn't work. Okay. Um, oh, this tricky English language. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at what my patrons are saying. It's important to close... It's important your close people don't beat you down when you start something. So don't, I wouldn't say close people... You'd say, um, people you are close to. It's important, it's important that the people you are close to don't beat you down when you start something. I'm going to write that out for you so you've got the correct version. It's important. Whoa, no. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. It's important that the people... Mm-hmm. The people that are close to you don't, because you're setting a general rule, we're not talking about the past. Um, didn't is in the past, did not. Um, it's important that the people that are close to you don't beat you down when you start something. Okay? And that's how it should be. Good, very nice. All right, so I think we've got the hang of that one. Um, Miranda says, English is very tricky. Yes, I realize the more and more I teach English, I realize how tricky it is. And actually, us natives, we tend not to tackle a problem. If, if us natives, I do it all the time, and I know other people do, if we, if we realize that we don't know exactly how a phrase is supposed to be said or we don't know the correct pronunciation of a word rather than finding out the true meaning and using it properly we'll either use it um, in, in the wrong way continuously or we avoid it i do it with spelling i'm terrible at spelling i'm terrible at reading and spelling i have dyslexia and so i i'm quite i, I find reading and writing a little difficult 
And rather than saying the word I want to say when I'm writing messages, I'll try and write it and then I can't figure it out. And rather than looking it up, I tend to just use a different word. She's very lazy and I know a lot of late natives do that. Okay, so let's move on to the next one, which is number 87. And this is the phrasal verb to beat out, to beat out. Now, um, there are a few ways you can use, use this, but I've just given one way and that is to defeat someone or something in a competition. To defeat someone or something in a competition. And the example sentence I've given here is, she was the underdog. An underdog is someone that you don't expect to win. Okay, so imagine if you're um, into boxing, and you have a champion boxer who wins every match, and then someone comes in who's never been in a professional boxing match before, they don't have very big muscles, they haven't been training for very long, they're not likely to win, so therefore they are the underdog. And normally we really get behind the underdog because it's very exciting when an underdog wins, it makes us feel like anything is possible. So we normally are excited by successful underdogs. And that's what underdog means. She was the underdog, expected to go home with nothing, but she beat out all the other athletes and took gold. Okay. Now, I know beat out as um, if I have information and I don't want to give you the information and then you come and punch me a lot until I give you that information, you have just beat the information out of me. So I'm using beat as in to physically hit. You've beat the information out of me. Um, yeah, so that's another way we could use it. Okay, so let's have a look at your messages. It's so funny. I always see your corrections in the chat room first. Then I got really excited to hear your explanation on YouTube a few seconds later. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, and what have I got in the YouTube chat room? I beat you down if you call me racist. So um, in that sentence, Fahad, it should be, I will beat you down. Um, although you'd probably use the next phrasal verb, which is beat up rather than beat down. Okay. If you're meaning in a physical sense. Um, great. Okay. Um, I will beat you out, Anna. Be ready for this. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> um, in, order, in order to our team to has the title. Okay, let me have a look at this one. There's a few corrections needed. Um, beat out, so let's put it here. All right, so this is Sharif. In order to our team has to has the title, we have to beat out most of the teams. Okay, so in order for, in order for, or yeah, because you're saying for our team. If you're going to say in order to win, then we could use two, but here we need four. In order for our team to have, not has, in order for our team to have the title or to get the title, let's use that. In order for our team to get the title, we have no capital here, not after a comma. We have to beat out most of of the, I would say other teams feels more natural. Um, in order for our team to get the title, I would actually use this comma as well. In order for our team to get the title, we have to beat out most of the other teams. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, da, 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 da. Anna beats me down with her beauty. <laughs> Why, thank you very much. I don't think I do, um, but thank you for the compliment. It's my first time watching you online, Anna. I'm Bram from Indonesia. Hello. Um, glad to be joining you with this. I wonder how often do you come online? Um, I'm normally online Mondays at four o'clock. So a couple more trips to the patron room and then I'll move on. Um, <laughs> uh, the crew were surprised when the unexpected guy beat out the competition. Yeah, good. Well done. Um, give it to me or I, I'll beat your brains out, said the shoplifter. Good, well done. 
very violent. Um, Anna, I bet you are a successful underdog in the athleticism scene. Um, we'd say on the scene rather than in the scene. Um, on the scene is more common. Uh, but thank you very much. I do try my best. Jose Mourinho was beaten out in the semi-finals. Uh, yes, yes, that works. Y you, can you hear that baby crying in the background, by the way? My new neighbours have a baby and it cries all the time. Um, you will beat out everyone, thankfully. Thankfully. So you say here, thanks to your determination, not thankfully to. Thanks to your determination. You will beat out everyone thanks to your determination. And then we have, if you won't give me the results, if you won't give me the result of the exam, I will beat it out of you. Very good. Anna, you are, you're very, very beautiful. Bless you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so let's move on to number 88. And this is very violent, to beat up. And this is the very common phrasal verb to use when talking about attacking someone. If you attack someone and you give them cuts and bruises and you punch them and kick them, then you have beaten them up. You beat them up. Okay? Um, we use this regularly. Obviously, it's we're not violent regularly, but when we're talking about this type of thing, this is the phrasal verb we most commonly use. Tell them I will beat them all up if they disrespect my mother again. Okay. So I don't need, think I need to labour on this one too long. I think it's very clear. Um, so of course you can put the object that you're going to beat in between beaten up or you can put it at the side. I will beat up that guy if he continues to disrespect my mother. Okay. Um, Tomaz has said her father beat up the guy who was too happy. Why would you beat someone up for being happy? But fine, sure. Yeah, that, that works as a sentence. Um, ba, ba, ba. Um, one of you is asking, how do I memorize all these things? Well, we only do 10 phrases of verbs in a, in a week. So I would suggest that you pick a handful of those phrases of verbs and try to put them into conversation each day. And then at the end of the week, you're going to remember pretty much all of those phrasal verbs. Because um, you only have to repeat something a few times for it to make a new pathway in your brain that will be remembered. Um, no one can beat you up. That's right. I'm strong. <laughs> I want to beat the arrogant people up. No, we shouldn't beat up anyone really. We should beat them up with our intellect, not with our fists. Um, look at me, I'm going to beat you up. No, don't beat me up, please. Okay, <laughs> all right, I'm going to be running the second. Alexander, the boys tried to rob the old man, but in the end, he beat them up. <laughs> good, good, good for the old man, well done. Um, Paluxio said he was beaten up badly by the bullies. That's good for bees, isn't it? That's a good little tongue twister. He was beaten up badly by the bullies beaten up badly by the bullies. We could even say, we could even change that and put an extra B in there. We could do, um, Brenda was beaten up badly by the bullies. Should we try that together? I think so. Let's have a look. So we could say, um, Brenda was beaten up badly by the bullies. Brenda was beaten up badly by the bullies. <laughs> Great, I love it. Okay, we've got two more to go. We've had around 230 of you watching. So before we get to the end, I would just ask you if you have found this helpful. I know that sometimes I talk too much, but if you have found this helpful, please do support all of these lessons by just taking the time to give it a like. These little um, acts of engagement do really help these videos to stay ranked so that people can find them when they're looking for phrasal verbs so do help me out by giving it a like and if you are kind enough to share then that would be very much appreciated if you are new here be sure to subscribe and to press the bell notification button and that will let you know every time i am live and when i release a new lesson so you don't miss out on anything okay let's move on to the last two then oh i love this phrasal verb to beaver away 
to beaver away. So if you are beavering away, it means you're working very hard. I use this quite a lot. Um, I'm a hard worker, so I'm often beavering away myself. And the example sentence I've given here is, your father's been beavering away in his shed for hours, building a rabbit hutch for your sister's new rabbit. Your father's been beavering away in his shed for hours, building a rabbit hutch for your sister's new rabbit. And if you're not sure, a rabbit hutch is a home, a box in which the rabbit lives in and makes a bed in. Um, so you've been beavering away. And you could say, last night I beavered away for hours. So you change it to the past um, tense version of the word. I beavered away for hours. Okay, so I want you to give me an example. Give me an example of this sentence, uh, this phrasal verb, sorry. <gasps> it's been a very long day. I haven't slept well this week. I think I had a lot on my mind. Lots of stressful things have happened this week. This week, this last seven days. I know actually we're in the start of the week, aren't we? And so I haven't slept well. So I do apologize for my ramblings. And if I'm incoherent, then I do apologize. Hopefully it's all still made sense though. Okay, I've got an example sentence here. Beaver away in order to be successful in your career. Yes, and good advice. Well done. What do I have in the Skype room? I am preparing for my IELTS test next week. If you are, then very good luck. And I've been beavering away to get a high band. Good. Just make sure you put a full stop on the end. And do you say high band in IELTS? I haven't taken the test or been involved with the test, so I don't know. Will you just say a high mark, a high score? Um... Camille says, I'm beavering away in my room learning English. Very good, perfectly written. Beaver away is the key to success in any business, someone said. Daniel, beavering away rather than beaver away. Beavering away is the key to success. Um, Sharif, I'm beavering away in order to get to the fluency level. Good, I would add high a high fluency level. I'm beavering away in order to get to a high fluency level. Um, okay, so, all right, so, sorry, I'm just getting um, distracted by the messages. It's very hard to keep talking and reading at the same time. Um, last one from my patron, then we'll do the very last phrase of verb, and that is, um, Anna is beaving away for her dreams on YouTube. Do you know, in fact, YouTube, YouTube is more, I do it because of you guys, not so much for me. Um, I was, I was always very passionate about being an actress. That was my passion. And then lots of people became very taken with my YouTube videos and I felt like I wanted to help more and more people. So it's, I'm beavering away more for you guys rather than for my own passions and dreams. Uh, they beavered away to earn a lot of money for travelling. Good. I would say to travel. That's not incorrect what you've done, but I would say to travel. They beavered away to earn lots of money to travel. It feels more natural. Okay, it's time for the very last one. So, the very last one on the list. Let me just make sure I'm up to date with you guys. Great. Are you ready for this? The last one on the list is to bed down to bed down. Now to bed down can be used in a lot of ways, metaphorically, or we can mean literally to bed down. It means that you make a bed, you lie down and you sleep. So I might say, I'm happy to bed down here on the couch if I'm staying at your house. And you say, I, I have a spare room, but it's not very comfortable. I'd say, it's okay. I'm happy to bed down here on the couch. Or, um, if I put the children to bed, I might say, I'm going to go and get the children, I'm going to bed the children down. I'm going to bed the children down and then I'll come back and we'll watch a film. But let me just bed the children down. So it's about putting something down and allowing it to settle. If, you're, if your context is about sleep, then it is putting someone to bed to sleep. Um, you might say to me, Anna, I've got nowhere to stay. Can I bed down at your house tonight? 
So in that respect, you mean to come and make somewhere to sleep. But then you can also use it with, um, if you're learning something, um, like I say, I've learned a new skill, but it hasn't bedded down yet. I need to give it time to bed down. And in that respect, I mean, I need it to settle in. I need it to sink in. So um, the government might introduce a new, um, or what's the word? I've lost the words. They might um, introduce a new set of rules um, and or a new initiative and they're trying something new out. Maybe it's something new to do with recycling and waste collection. Um, and it's not quite going well, but we say they just it just needs time. This new initiative needs time to bed down. It needs time to get settled so that everyone knows what they're doing and if, to finally work, it needs time to bed down. Okay, hope that makes sense. I'm gonna show you the example that I've written here. We have had a very long day. We should probably probably bed down in a few minutes. We have had a very long day and should probably bed down in a few minutes. Okay, fantastic. Okay, um, let's kind of have a look at some of your, your sentences. I used to bed down on the sofa while I was watching TV. Yes, I think we're all guilty of that if you are very tired but you can't stop watching the television and then you fall asleep in front of the TV and then you wake up with a bad neck. Oh, that's terrible, isn't it? Um, but good, make sure you use a full stop at the end of your sentences, please. Um, nurse help bed down, seek people gently. Hmm, hmm. I'm not quite sure exactly what the meaning is with that, but that sentence is not quite right. Let's see if we can figure it out together. So who's written this? Um, oh, uh, Abdurrahman, Abdurrahman. Nurse, nurses, I think possibly you want to say in general, nurses help. Uh, let's say, okay, so nurses, I don't know what this is. Nurses help, gently help, gently help people to bed down um, when they when they are unwell. Nurses gently help people to bed down when they are unwell. That could work. Maybe that's what you mean. Um, hopefully that helped. And then I have. Um, I need to bed down soon in order to watch Australian Open at night. So make sure you use the Australian Open. So you need the article. Um, I need to bed down soon in order to watch the, sorry, it'd be the because the next word begins with a vowel. I need to bed down soon in order to watch the Australian Open at night or late tonight. Um, behind you, the moon is complete circle. What are you looking at? That's not the moon. You're, that, that's, that's a street light. It looks like the moon, doesn't it? But it's not the moon, that's a street light. <laughs> people always say strange things. I always read back on the comments, say people going, there's someone at your window or there's something on your ceiling. And I have to look back and go, what are they looking at? There's nothing on my ceiling except for the lights. <laughs> and hopefully there's nobody at my window because that'll be scary. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I can't see any more examples there, so I'm going to go to the patron room. Um, ba, ba, ba. Did you say acting was your passion, says Ella? Uh, yes, so Ella, um, what's happened now is, obviously I was a professional actress, and um, I've been acting for a long time, I was getting jobs, but... Um, YouTube kind of take, took over and I felt more needed and more appreciated here on YouTube and I didn't feel like it was fair for me to continue taking acting jobs that would take me away from my work with you guys and so I have officially given up my acting career. I have um, no longer got a manager, I've given up my um, equity card which is my union and I've, I'm about to give up my Spotlight membership, which is where you put yourself out for work as an actor. And you, I'm removing my CV. 
So, uh, yes, I am no longer an actor. Well, not in the other sense of the word. I'm an actor on YouTube because I kind of act a little bit in my YouTube videos. But yes, it's all about you guys now. You are my full-time commitment. Um, Alexander, you won't bed down if you drink too much coffee. Very good. Um, I'm afraid that you don't have a couch in my living room to bed down on. So you need an extra, um, you need a preposition at the end there. I'm afraid that I don't have a, a couch in my living room to bed down on. Okay, good. Anna, could you please read out some of these words aloud? Can I do that at the end? I'll come to that at the very end. Um, all right, guys. So hopefully you've all got to grips with that. So we've had, let's just quickly recap. We had um, to to have a bearing on something. If, if something bears on something, it has an effect on it. Um, then we had to bear out. So to support or to uh, prove a claim or an idea, this will bear it out. My actions will bear out that I love you. To bear up, how are you bearing up? Are you bearing up okay? I'm bearing up okay, I hope you are. How are you bearing up under the pressure? He doesn't bear up very well under pressure. So how are you coping? To bear with, please bear with me, be patient, wait, bear with me, wait for me. I'm sure you can remember that one. Put that one on your list of ones to remember because we do commonly use that. Bear down, sorry, beat down. If, if the sun is beating down, the rain is beating down, you could beat down the door. You could beat down someone's enthusiasm for life and make them feel miserable. Um, and then we have beat someone up. You beat someone up, you give them a, a, a good punch in the face and make them feel horrendous, so don't beat people up. You could beat out, so you could um, defeat someone, defeat them in a competition. I beat out all the other athletes when I competed. You could beaver away, hopefully you are beavering away hard learning English. Beaving, beavering away, you're working hard. And then finally, bed down. I'm hoping that all this information, all these phrasal verbs will bed down and you'll retain it all, okay? Okay, good. So now I am available to answer your questions and your requests for a few moments before I say goodbye. If you have joined me for the first time, I'll just repeat myself. Please do press subscribe and the bell notification button so you don't miss any future lessons. And if you're not following me on Instagram, guys, what are you doing? Get over to Instagram. I have lots of videos and I'm doing, trying to do daily pronunciation videos. They're very short. They're free and it can help you with your pronunciation and also to learn new words on a regular basis. So it's a good way to integrate English into your daily life. Instagram is also a great platform. There's lots of other teachers on there doing great work. My Instagram handle is British English Pro. So just go and find me on Instagram. The link's also in the description box below. And I'm on Twitter and I'm on Facebook and the links for those should be down below. So please join me on all these social networks. I'm trying to interact in different ways on the different networks. So come and join me. Let's make this a full all round experience. Um, okay, patrons, Alexander, let me do this for you. So you've asked me to pronounce these words. Forthcoming, on display, space suit, live transmission, Spacecraft launches, array, enable, unmanned, full size, lunar, research vehicle, give talks, showcase, I think that should be one word, shouldn't it? Rave reviews, strand, carry out, undertake, space watching world, Evolve, mind-blowing, cluster, stargazers, and you are very welcome. 
For those of you who are interested in joining the Skype group, the Skype group is available and a way of me rewarding my patrons. As you can see, my patrons always receive a response from me. They can also message me privately. They also receive copies of the notes. Some of them receive free eBooks. Some of them are friends with me on WhatsApp. Some of them get calls with me um, each month, depending on their level of donation towards helping me to grow this channel. This is what's important to me and they help me to create this channel, to keep this channel going so that you guys can all benefit. If you want to be involved in that, if this is something that you care about too, and you do want to get involved and you want to also get some of those rewards, then we'd love to have you. There is always room for more support because I need a team. I do need help on this channel. It's becoming very, very difficult to run everything to the level I want to. So I am pleading for more patrons. Anyone who can help, then please do come along. I'm trying my very best to make sure you have as many rewards as possible. The link to find out about the rewards is down in the description box below. So check it out, have a think about it. And if you can come on board, then we would love to have you and you will definitely be much more involved in what happens on this channel. All right, I am going to answer a couple of questions on YouTube and then I'm gonna say good night. Um, <laughs> so let's see. What do I have? Anna, can you please pronounce words starting with the letter T and D, mouth shapes and tongue positions? So I do have some previous lessons that I did specifically on those sounds. If you look at the playlist, um, British pronunciation, or look at the daily pronunciation videos, you'll find quite a lot on T's and D's. So go and check those out. Um, could you tell me what does it mean? Can I beat this? If you say the phrase, um, I can beat this, it means you can defeat it. So lots of people talk about beating cancer. If you're unfortunate, unfortunate enough to have cancer, then you'll want to beat the cancer. You want to defeat it. You want to get over it. You want to get better. So it's about being victorious. Okay. And um, bless Suavec, uh, Suavemir um, has dropped a 10... I can't remember how to pronounce this, the Polish currency. Oh, I've forgotten the word, but thank you very much for your super chat. That's very kind. It's nice to see you in the live, um, the live broadcast. That's really sweet. Thank you very much. Um, I, of course, will also give you a copy of any notes that you would like. Okay, a couple more questions and then I'm going to go and do some more work. How do you pronounce emerald? The nice green gemstone, emerald, emerald. Um, Miranda says, um, have a day to bed down, Anna. I think you need to relax. I wish I could relax. There's no time to relax. There's far too much work to do, but thank you very much. That's very kind. Anna, can I call a spacer, someone from space? Because there's an old song called Spacer and I think it's for someone from space. I don't know. I've never heard of the phrase spacer. Does anyone else have anything to say about that? Someone from space, would you call him a spacer? I would call him a space man. Um, how do you pronounce chauffeur? Chauffeur, the person who drives you around. If you have someone to drive you somewhere, they're called a chauffeur. A chauffeur. Um, Anna, I have a lot of problems to under... I have a lot of problems understanding the Scottish accent. That's how you should word it. I have a lot of problems understanding the Scottish accent. What can I do? Could you help me? I do have a video about the Glasgow accent that might help you. Um, but with all accents, it's, it just takes time. You have to be around the accent a lot and really listen and get used to it. I say you have to tune into it. So it's like tuning a radio. At first, it's hard to understand and then it becomes clearer and clearer. It just takes time. Um... Okay. Um, I'm not on Snapchat. People are asking about Snapchat. So you can search and search, but you won't find me there. Oh, and before I leave, can I just make a request? If any of you see my videos or see me coming up in a place that isn't my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, if you see my videos somewhere else on someone else's page and it's not linked to my YouTube channel, could you please let me know? 
there's been a lot of instances recently, a lot of instances where people are stealing my videos and then uploading them as their own. And, and it's, it's like stealing from me, basically. They're taking my views, they're taking my audience and they're not giving me any credit for it. And it's very upsetting. So some of you have already come and told me about certain instances, which I've managed to then report and get taken down. So if anyone does see anything that you know belongs to me, can you please tell me so I can go and report it and get it taken down? That'd be great. And if you do, if you have a page or a website and you want to share my stuff, you can, but I would rather, I would ask that you embed it or you share the YouTube link. Don't take the content, download it, edit it and re-upload it as your own. Um, I'm happy for people to share, but you have to share in the right way that gives credit to the to the actual content creators. But that would be awesome. If anyone sees anything, keep your eyes out for me. Let me know. All right, guys, I'm going to stop wasting your time now and I'm going to go. Um, thank you so much. There are a few more videos coming out this week. I am going up to Wales this week to visit my family, but there will hopefully be another video out in the next few days which I hope you will enjoy and I'll also be around on Instagram so catch up with my adventures there otherwise take care lots of love from London mm -hmm.